Stay tuned to meet one of my best friends on the planet who's doing great things for God. My name is Yvonne Lewis, and you're watching Urban Report. Welcome to Urban Report. My guest today is Yolanda Palmer, singer, writer, producer, and one of my dearest friends. Welcome to Urban Report, <laughs> Precious. You, so good to have you. A lot of our viewers know you because you have been a part of 3ABN's family for a long time, coming mm -hmm. back and forth, yes. but some don't. Mm -hmm. And I'd like for them to really kind of know your story. So let's talk about your journey a bit and let let people know where you came from okay well uh, it's interesting because back in 1985 along with yourself um, we were both singing jingles and doing a lot of work in the world and making a lot of money and um, God is so amazing I was brought up in a Christian home but never became converted Mm. And once I moved to New York and studied music and we began to sing and do all of those things, making all the money, having all the furs and the diamonds and all those things, my sister came to me and she said, Yolanda, when are you going to give your life to Jesus? Because all the material wealth in the world, one day is going to burn up. Mm. Uh, you know what? I have mm -hmm. to stop you for yes. a second, Lala. Uh -huh. Viewers, you need to know. You know oh, how no. I have to. You know how I give you all the four one one, right? No. You have to know that Yolanda was a game changer. And when she came to the jobs with the, you know, the jingles and stuff. She was dressed to the nines. Oh, she no. raised the game oh, at no. the studio. <laughs> Furs and diamonds oh, to, a, to a job in the studio. Oh, she my. always looked fabulous. Okay, so go ahead, Yolanda. Oh, my. I had to say that. <laughs> I, I had to let them know, like, you know, what the real deal was. Okay, so yeah. go ahead. Well, you know, I praise the Lord, Yvonne, because since then, God revealed to me that even though I thought I was fantastically dressed and mm -hmm, all of that, mm -hmm. the Lord revealed to me that I was looking like Jezebel's sister. Oh. So now he totally, thank God, has changed that for me mm -hmm. because that was my God, as you know. Mm -hmm. So God is good. God is good. <laughs> but, you know, after going through that experience with singing for the world, making all the money, doing all those things, it turned out that my sister came to visit me one day and she said, Yolanda, when, you, when are you going to give your life to the Lord? And I said, well, you know, I'm doing so well. I said, why would I want to do that? I said, because I'm enjoying what I'm doing. I'm making all this money. I don't have any problems. So I said, people need the Lord when they have problems and issues. So she looked at me. She says, oh, Yolanda, don't you realize that one day when Jesus comes, if you're not in Christ, you're going to die an eternal death. And I thought, well, Sonia, are you sure about that? She said, I'm positive. She said, read the Bible. We were brought up in the church. You understand these things. So I said, well, look, just pray for me if my life's ever threatened, um, that the Lord would give me a moment to say a prayer. And when we all get to heaven, I'll be there too. So you just kind of brushed it off a bit, feeling yes. like that, that salvation is for someone else, yes. but not for you. That's right. When I get older, I told her, um, when I finish my life, you know, what I want to do now, I said, then I'll give my life to Jesus. And she said, Yolanda, the Bible says tomorrow is not promised to you. Mm. She said, give your life to the Lord now before it's too late. So I said, no, I said, Sonia, I'm, I'm really not ready to do that, but pray for me. And one day the Lord's going to call me to give my life to him. So she prayed for me, Yvonne, thinking Yolanda will never give her life to the Lord. She's got all this material wealth and friends and she's hanging out with, you know, people like Luther and, and just singing with people like Michael Jackson and all these famous people. She'll never do it. And so um, about a month later, I was traveling on a plane. And um, as you know, we traveled and did all kinds of things. And so I was singing with Asher and Simpson at the time. And while on the plane, it turns out it was three in the morning, the plane began to have turbulence because we had flown into a terrible storm. The stewardess woke everybody up with the flashlights and says, be prepared. We don't know what's going to happen, but be ready. And when she said, be ready, the Holy Spirit said, you're not ready. Oh. And every time I think about it, I just want to choke up and cry because mm -hmm. 
God is so merciful. He is. He is. And he heard my little prayer. And the plane leveled off. We flew safely to our destination. And that's when you and I met um, as Christian sisters uh, or as sisters to say, you know, we better get ready. Because the Lord was dealing with me. Yes. On the other end. Yes. You know, and I had started to come back to him too because Amen. I had left the church for a while. I was raised as an Adventist and I had left the yes. church for a while. Right. So when you came back mm -hmm. and your life had changed mm -hmm. and I had started reading the word yes. and started studying, we started studying together. Yes. It's so, God is so good. Yes. Amen. So many of our young people, mm -hmm. and I, I, I call her Lala. So, <laughs> so many of our young people, mm -hmm. Lala, mm -hmm. think that money and fame mm -hmm. just give you everything. Yes. And what we found mm -hmm. is that it's nothing. No. I'd never go back Amen. to that. Amen. Praise never. God. Amen. Because this is the abundant life. Yes, it is. And so what you're saying and, mm -hmm. and what I know our viewers are hearing mm -hmm. is that that one prayer was mm -hmm. pivotal yes. in your life. Absolutely. Turned everything around mm -hmm. and from then on mm -hmm. you began to seek God in a whole new way. Yes. yes. What happened in your life when you made that decision? Well, what happened was I called my sister and I said, you won't believe it. I said, I think I'm a born again Christian because I feel different. I feel like I want the Lord. I want to know him. And she says, yes, did you pray? What did you do? And I said, yeah, I just asked the Lord to come into my heart, forgive me for my sins. And if he would give me power to overcome the world and the things of the world, then I would give my life to him and serve him for the rest of my life. She said, you are born again. She said, the Lord heard that prayer. She said, now just study, just read the word of God, pray and ask him what his will is for your life. But when I did that, I came back to New York from the other trip and I saw you at a session. And I said, Yvonne, you won't believe what happened. So I told you all about it and you were like, Lala, this is amazing because your grandmother had called you to come to church and Pastor C.A. Murray was the exactly. pastor. Exactly. Oh, I'm going to chill. This and is so good. And then you said, Lola, come to church with me. Let's go to church together. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, well, Yvonne, I said, okay. I said, but, and, and you said, okay, but there's one thing. And I said, well, what's that? You said, well, I go to church on the Sabbath. I said, well, I've been reading about that, but I didn't know black people went to church on the Sabbath. <laughs> I thought it was just for the Jews. So you said, no, come and go to church with me. We have a new pastor, it's C.A. Murray, and you've got to hear him preach. So we started going to church together, but you kept going with me for a little while to the Sunday church, because I said, if you go with me, I'll go with you. <laughs> so we traded off, but then you kept like, okay, Yolanda, that's enough. Okay, <laughs> may the Lord help you, you know, from here. And so we begin to do the Friday night Bible studies. Oh, with all we the need singers. to tell them about that. Yes. Because that, for me, that was so amazing yes. to have all of, a lot of our friends would come, yes. we would sing, mm -hmm. we would read the word, yes. and we had people from different doctrinal right. they, uh, foundations. Yes. They were, they weren't Adventists necessarily, right. but they were all seeking. Yes. And we would come together and mm -hmm. sing and pray yes. and praise. To me, that was every Friday night. Every we Friday had a Bible night. study. Yes, it, it was, was awesome. phenomenal. Awesome. And, and we're, not, we're not talking about like last year. We're talking about in 1984, <laughs> right. 85. Yes, yes. And I remember you invited Roberta Flack and, and we had um, a lot of models there and um, actors did. and actresses and some really good pastors came. John, um, what was his name? John, um, oh. um, yeah. Uh, they would come in and, and study with us, John Nixon. Nixon. Yes. Nixon. So it was an amazing time. And so at that point, you know, you all prayed for me because I was going off to Uchi Pines and ended up at Uchi Pines. Okay, wait. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not going to let you get away with that. Yes. So Yolanda decided that she was going to sell her, <laughs> her clothes because she mm -hmm. wasn't going to take the same clothes to Uchi Pines. Yes. So she, <laughs> she had, if you could have seen, it was like a store. Oh, I mean, I racks. Know. You literally had racks of clothing. I know. You, I think I got a couple of pairs of boots. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, you did. I got you gold did. Press boots myself. You did. But you were determined. Yeah. One thing about you, Lala, that's always been when mm -hmm. you were in the world and mm -hmm. since you've come back to the Lord, mm -hmm. is that you've always been very disciplined. Oh, like I when you God. when you had something, a goal or something that yeah. you were trying to do, yes. you were always focused. And the other thing that our mm -hmm. viewers should know mm -hmm. is that you were never like into the alcohol or right. the drugs because right. we used to go out sometimes yes. and we weren't drinking, we yes. weren't smoking, we weren't, but we were still lost. I mean, yes. you know, we can't delude ourselves That's and think right. we were, you know, on the right path. Mm -hmm. But we didn't get into all of that. Yes. But yet we were still disillusioned. Mm -hmm. So you sold all of your stuff. Yes. Praise and, God. And how did, tell our viewers how mm -hmm. the industry reacted to your conversion. They thought I was crazy, okay? <laughs> the people, <laughs> my friends, my family, the people in the industry said, Yolanda, but we always thought you were a Christian. What do you mean you can't sing for um, Budweiser or Michelob or any of these things or wine? Or, and I said, or Burger King even, because, you know, but anyway, God is so amazing because when they would say to me, what are you doing? You're selling everything and you don't, dressed like you used to. They said, you look dead. What have you done? And I said, praise the Lord. I'm dead in Christ mm. and I'm, yet I'm alive. Mm. And so that was, that, that was an incredible experience for me because the Lord told me like the rich young ruler, go and sell all that you have and then follow me. Yes. So that's what I did. And just on that one day, Yvonne, with that sale with my diamonds and all these things, mm. $20,000 worth of stuff in that one day at oh. Ashford and Simpson's home was sold. Unbelievable. 20000 20, I wasn't exaggerating. <laughs> I wasn't exaggerating. When I said it was like a store, yeah. I, had, I didn't know it was a $20,000 yeah. price tag, though. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And then just gave wow. the rest of the stuff away that didn't sell mm -hmm. to um, one of the... Um, uh, I think it was the eyes for the blind for New York, something like that. Yes. But girl, I tell you, I am free in Jesus. Yes. And I am so thankful There's to God. There's no comparison. None. There's no comparison. And the gifts that God has given you, Yes. now you use them for Him. Amen. Because when we sang about, you know, like, potato chips or mm -hmm. Burger King or whatever. Mm -hmm. When we did that, mm -hmm. yeah, it was lucrative, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. but it didn't do anything for the spirit. Right, right. Nothing. I mean, you go there, you go to work, you do it, you go, you leave, you get money. I mean, it, yes. it, that part was really mm -hmm. nice, mm -hmm. but there was nothing about it that was so, that was spiritually redemptive. Right, right. And yes. so now mm -hmm. to now come full circle and use your gifts for God. Yes. It, what I mean, there's yes. nothing better. Oh, it's nothing amazing. better. But let's talk a little bit about Yuchi Pines. So okay. you sold all your stuff. Mm -hmm. You went to Yuchi Pines. What mm -hmm. were you going there for? Well, to be honest, I was going there because a friend of mine, Judy and Todd, had told me there was a young man they wanted me. Oh! Yes. I went there thinking, okay, God, it's been several years now. I've been in the church and, you know, um, yeah. okay, it's time, it's time to husband. get married. Right. Yes, okay. amen. Right. And so I got there and um, it wasn't God's will for me, for, for me to be with this person, but it was because he wanted me to be, he wanted to be my husband, truly wanted to be my husband, man. So God did. God uh -huh. did. So he showed me that that's not why I brought you here. And he showed me the scripture you know, the Lord thy God is your husband. And so I said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna be content, but I can't stay here. I said, Lord, I'm from New York, you know, and from <laughs> the Motor City, shot. yeah, I'm culture <laughs> shock. And you know, it was just amazing, Yvonne, because people had on suspenders and they would say, y'all, you know, we're so happy y'all are here. And I was like, Lord, no way. <laughs> right. But God is awesome because he wanted to humble me and teach me and root me and ground me in the truth of the Seventh-day Adventist Church through biblical teaching. And that's what he gave me there. And then he, he showed me how to um, humble myself in that because, you know, we were two sisters that had it going on with our apartments. <laughs> we would have people come in and clean for us and iron our clothes. Oh, and you know, I we know. were doing that. Baps. Oh yeah. Oh, they call Baps. Bap <laughs> yeah, Black American princesses. Oh, oh my, I've never heard that term. <laughs> but anyway, that's what we were into. And the Lord had to take me to Uchi Pines in the country, you know, no lights, no flash, no glamor, and really convert me. 
And so while there, the first job I had, even though I was going there as a student, the first job they gave me in, in um, conjunction with the studies, I had to clean eight toilets every day for three months. Whoa. And I was shocked. I was in shock. Whoa. I thought they you were went from the diamonds and furs <laughs> to cleaning. Not that there's, let's, let's be clear. Amen, amen. Not that there's anything wrong with cleaning toilets, but we're amen. just talking about the difference yes. in what you had to do. Yes. It really was eye-opening for you, it right? It was eye-opening, Yvonne, and it was such a wake-up call and so humbling and um, it gave me that servant attitude you know yes. you're here to serve not to be served but to serve and so when the Lord taught me these wonderful lessons of, of, of sacrifice and servitude and all these things that he wanted to teach me how to love in Christ you know how to really be converted yes um, I was just so happy so thankful and um, and then I left Uchi Pines after, uh, uh, you know, studying there and studied the medical missionary work and and uh, all of that. Which we're going to come back to that, which okay. is so deep to me because yes. see, God, even though you went down to Uchi Pines for <laughs> one reason, <laughs> yes, yes, amen. You learned the medical missionary work, right. which is really a part of where you are now, yes. which we'll talk about. Okay, so you left Uchi Pines. Right. You completed the program. I completed the program. You left Uchi Pines. Mm -hmm. Where did you go? I ended up back in New York. Okay. And um, at that point, I was trying to see, okay, God, what do you want me to do now? Um, you took me out of the jingle world. You separated me from the man I was going to marry, who was unfortunately not totally converted. And you helped me with that, remember? <laughs> you said, la, la, you need to fast and pray about that. <laughs> <laughs> so we've helped each other through the years yes, on things. Yes, for so sure. God revealed to me that wasn't what He wanted me to do, and so He just got me um, into singing um, as a singing evangelist. So I started singing for different uh, pastors and traveling and singing for people like um, Cleveland um, and just different evangelists. Yeah. And that's kind of when the Lord rooted me and grounded me in ministry. And uh, you and I kind of stayed in touch for a while and, and kept praying for each other. And you were so encouraging because God used you to bring me into the church. Well, praise the Lord. You know, so it's, it's an amazing thing along with Pastor Murray. Just oh, amazing. for sure. Yes. For sure. Yes. So now, I guess our time is going and I cannot believe where we are in time. Mm -hmm. What are you doing now? Tell okay. us about your latest ministry. Yes. Now I'm, thank God, married to the most wonderful man. Yeah, His name is precious. Schubert Palmer. Yay! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> <laughs> and um, you were there at our wedding and you're oh, my, my um, matron of honor. <laughs> it was the most beautiful wedding I've ever been to. Oh. Not just because of the aesthetics, mm. but the Spirit of God Amen. was so it was almost palpable. Amen. I could just sense his presence. Yes. And then everybody sang. <laughs> I mean, it was, I've never been to a wedding like that before, <laughs> ever. It was just the most beautiful event. Oh, and the Holy Spirit, God. you had praise to God during yes. the wedding. Amen. And so it's as though, you know, the, the Bible says that God inhabits the praises of yes. his people. So we felt his presence. Amen. It was it was so beautiful. Amen. Oh, so beautiful. And we were blessed too because of course you're being there with us and John Loma came. That's right. Was moving to 3 AVN at the time. And I was like, John, <laughs> no, you can't cancel. You have to sing at my wedding. <laughs> you interrupted his move. Yes. Come up and <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, he said, okay, I'm going to do it, and then I have to run home and pack and get out of here and go to 3 AVN. So he was there with us as well. So it was such a blessing. It's tremendous. And so at this point, um, being married to my husband and seeing how God has brought back my Uchi Pines experience with medical missionary work uh, with my husband. So we do a program called Is There a Doctor in the House? which is, is a wonderful health pro program. And people need to know your, your husband's a physician. Yes. I uh -huh. mean, he's he is... He's, tell us about him. Yeah, he's the um, chief of cardiology at the White Memorial Hospital in uh, Los Angeles. And um, just a humble man. Humble, he, kind, he's gentle. so kind. You know, yes. I, I've told 
the viewers on, I guess, on the Today program. I haven't talked about it on this program yet, mm -hmm. but about my experience with the acupuncture oh, and everything. Yes. And how you and your husband were so instrumental mm -hmm. in bringing me away oh, from that. You, God, God has used us in each other's yes. lives so profoundly. Yes. And, um, and to accomplish his purposes, Amen. those spiritual purposes. Amen. Too. And um, he's just, Schubert is just such, he's, he's a wonderful brother <laughs> in the Lord, and he's a yes. musician. Yes, yes. Yeah, so God yes. did, God gave you that doctorate and a musician. Like, whoa, <laughs> he did, he <laughs> Praise did. Him. And so the Lord had mentioned to me, you know, years and years ago, about putting his music, his words to music, and I thought, what is that, Lord? I don't understand. I don't know what that is. But as time went on and um, uh, got involved in, in doing some production and writing and, and that sort of thing, the Lord led us to put together the Ten Commandments to music. Mm -hmm. And we praise God for 3ABN because the encouragement came through Danny Shelton when he started doing those Ten Commandment week programs. Yes. We would watch intently and having all these different ministers speaking on each of the commandments, it was powerful. And so about three years later, after we had watched all these programs, we thought, oh, honey, wouldn't it be great to put God's commandments to music? And so that really encouraged us through watching 3ABN. And so we praise God for, for Danny and for this whole program and for Amen. what God is doing through 3ABN and you and Amen. all of this. And so as, as we started doing that and praying about it, we just took the Ten Commandments, put it to music, but we didn't have the love in the music. It was just straight commandments, you know? And the music was beautiful, but it didn't touch the heart. It mm. didn't inspire you to love God. Mm. You know, it's God's love letter to us, the Ten Commandments. And so we got a call from Whitley Phipps and he said, Yolanda, he said, I love the project. I love the idea. He said, but God told me to tell you to put love in his commandments. So he reinforced what the Holy Spirit had already revealed to you Pastor Wentley Phipps reinforced that. Yes, but he he basically when he said it 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 was something that my heart was moved by, you know, because we didn't think of it in those terms. We just thought this is God's commandments and we're just going to put beautiful music to it, but we didn't understand how God really wanted us to bring out the words like in the third commandment. The only time he mentions the word love in the commandments is in the third commandment. So God said, title the song, Love Me. And so um, the second commandment was about, you know, not worshiping idols and all this. And, and so he built, he had us build these, these choruses around his glorious presence, yes. his name. You know, the second commandment, worship God. He deserves the praise. So God through Wentley, um, through the Holy Spirit's power, brought to our minds, you have to bring the love out of the commandments so that people be drawn mm. to, to Jesus. And so that's, that's what um, happened there. And, um, and then the Lord had us to put Bible studies to each of the commandments and put the Bible studies in song as well. And so that's what we're, we're doing right now. We put the Ten Commandments uh, in song with Bible studies in song, and we just completed it um, and God is taking it and using it, and, and it's, it's just been a blessing. That's so tremendous. You know, when I was in California mm -hmm. at the camp meeting, SoCal yes. camp meeting, yes. I had a chance to come to a concert yes. where you were doing all the songs yes. on the CD, on the DVD. Mm -hmm. Viewers, if you have an opportunity to go and see this in concert, mm -hmm. please do it. It mm -hmm. is so inspirational. Amen. I mean, and if you can, of course, please get the CD and DVD because Amen. it's it's truly a blessing. Oh, we praise truly God. Truly a we blessing. We praise God. And oh. we thank you too because you are partnering with us yes. and, and donating some units to us so that yes. we can make some a revenue for yes. Dare to Dream. We have pictures on the screen now amen. Of, uh, of the project. So oh, we thank amen. you so much. What a blessing that oh, is. Oh, thank you, Yvonne. Such a blessing. Thank you. So what's your plan? You have two parts here. You've mm -hmm. got the music yes. and the Bible studies. Yes. So tell us a bit about the Bible studies now. What, what does that entail? Okay, the Bible studies were drawn out of each of the commandments 
And of course, the, the one that is very obvious is the Sabbath commandment. So that study is on the Sabbath. And we took the actual song that God gave us on the um, fourth commandment, and it's incorporated in uh, a list of about 10 key texts that have been put to music for each study. So when you mm. come to understand the doctrine of the Sabbath, you will also learn by memorization the key texts that go with that study. So if you're at a, at a mall or in a bakery or wherever you are, you will have all those texts of the doctrine in your mind. And you can give a Bible study even without the Bible. It's in your heart. So it's in your, in your heart and in your head. So that's what God has done. It's, it's just an amazing thing. That is so amazing. And the music is so beautiful and oh. lush. Oh, it's lush. God. I mean, praise the orchestration, everything is so beautiful. Amen. And you and Schubert wrote, uh, uh, again, under the unction yeah. of the Holy Spirit, yes. all of the songs. Yeah, the Lord gave us all the songs. And then we had a, uh, a miracle story too, Martine and Duet. Oh, tell us. Yes, he, um, he always talks about you. <laughs> it's just so interesting because it was just a miracle how we met him at uh, a function. Um, for the church and he was doing their sound and we went to a little lunch together after the program was over and there he was and I said to my husband I think I know this gentleman he looks so familiar so we ended up sitting together at the same table there are many areas where he could have sat but he came and sat with us we began to talk he began to tell me I used to sing you know with Joy I mean uh, Joe Sicarella Joe Sicarella mm -hmm. in New York and I thought no you're not the same person and then he started talking about Yvonne Lewis and you know all of that and I said Lord this is amazing and so he's the person God used to do all the orchestrations for us, along with some other very, um, very well um, qualified um, Adventist musicians. Tell us some of the artists on it. Yeah, we have um, Jennifer LeBountain and Rudy Michelli, Charles Huggerbrooks, Steve Darmody, um, Rachel Hyman. Um, I wanted you on there. But I know. <laughs> I, know. I forget what time. happened and I wasn't able to do it. Yes, but. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and many others, uh, Christian Berdahl and quite a number of other people. There are about 10 of us. Um, Anita Sampson, oh, oh her Anika. voice. Oh. Anika Sampson, yes, and Javier, um, uh, I can't think of his last name right now, but uh -huh. um, so a lot of different singers uh, in the church are, uh, have participated, and, and we're just so blessed to have all of them. God has done a, an incredible thing. He has. Mm -hmm. He has, and again, his spirit, you can just sense his spirit when you amen. listen to the music. Oh, amen. You are such a blessing, and I'm so proud of what God oh, has been doing with you yes. and with um, the production, with Ready. Yes. And how can people Ready. find out more about this project? Well, it's going to be at the ABCs in the uh, Adventist Book Centers, and they can go on our website at uh, www.ready, R-E-A-D-Y, sda.org. Say so, it one more time. Uh-huh. Ready, sda dot O-R-G. Mm -hmm. Ready, sda dot O-R-G. Yes. Thank you, sweetie. You're welcome. Thank you so much for being with us and for blessing us with your music mm. and that spirit of service that God has given you. Amen. We thank you. Thank you. And I ask you to go out and purchase this or call, go to the website and purchase this product. product. It will bless you. Well, we've come to the end of our program. Thanks for tuning in. Join us next time. It just wouldn't be the same. Without you.